Welcome everybody to The Building Code, where today we have replaced Charlie with Nicole in the studio. She may not say anything. Charlie uh, planned a vacation, <laughs> and due to my own travel circumstances, I would have been internationally recording the episode, and then I came back, we had to do some things. Now, Charlie is literally sitting in front of the, the, of the Mount Rushmore. The Mount Rushmore. The yeah, Mount Rushmore. Uh, How's the weather, like, bro? It's it's very hot, actually. <laughs> if you're on um, if you're on YouTube, you can see Charlie sweating in his in his so, new building code it, swag. Right. If you're not on YouTube, this would be a great one to tune in for for a couple of reasons. One, Zach and I finally got some swag. So huge <laughs> shout out to Nicole for putting this together. We got uh, so if you want to see us wearing our fancy uh, fancy quarter zips, you can tune in. They're very yeah, they're very nice. And also, I am at the base of Mount Rushmore, so uh, I have. This is not a fake background. This is not a green screen. Uh, this is live uh, from Mount Rushmore. And if all goes well, it's the week of July 4th. So, Right. Hopefully, by the time this comes out, um, you would have celebrated and uh, ate some hot dogs and shot some fireworks. And now you can uh, virtually pay a visit to Mount Rushmore and listen to the Billy Code at the same time and learn a ton because we have a fantastic guest on today. Zach, tell, uh, tell our people at home who we have. Today, we have yet another episode with Breakthrough Academy. Paul Atherton, who's a Number business two, coach. Baby. That's right. Big fans, obviously, uh, in our our recap episode a while back, my favorite episode ever of The Building Code that we hosted, Charlie, was with Benji, which he knows. I actually recently got to rekindle our relationship, my relationship with Benji. You weren't there. Sorry. Yeah, I wasn't going to bring it up, but yeah, once again, Zach did get to travel. Maybe you can connect with Paul. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe we'll see, but yeah. How did that go? By the way, right? You were on a round table, uh, phenomenal with a, uh, a few was, different members of Breakthrough, a few different members of BT. Yep, yep. So we had Breakthrough hosted it, and we had two builders that use Builder Trend, Ian and Greg, uh, very prominent, very very successful builders in their areas, and it was awesome. We had we had 250 attendees, and nice. and yeah. Is that uh? Is that is that out anywhere that people can check out, or is that a yeah, so it's actually, Live, uh, we have, I believe it's on our blog. I will ask Nicole to maybe like put it in the show notes. It would be a good cross plug for sure. It was great content. We yeah. covered a lot of the things that I think we're going to get in with Paul. So we're really dragging this intro out <laughs> and I just I'm feeling the patriotic spirit. I feel like I want to yep. quiz you of like who wrote the Declaration of Independence or, you know, name, name one fact about each guy standing behind you, but we'll spare that for the outro and get yeah, Paul well, on. I'll study up during the interview. <laughs> yeah, well, we could tell. You know. <laughs> All right, let's get Paul on here. Welcome, Paul Atherton, to the Building Code. Uh, we're so excited to have you on. We're we're great friends of Breakthrough Academy, and yet another member joining us today. Paul, why don't you introduce yourself for our listeners out there? Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. And yeah, likewise, I have a lot of respect for uh, for Builder Trends, so I'm excited to be here. Um, and uh, as you guys, uh, yeah, so I work for a company called Breakthrough Academy, and we focus on systemizing trades-based businesses and helping owners set up their organizations to uh, kind of uh, pursue whatever it is they value in life. So, um, and yeah, my, my focus in the, in the company is primarily on the success of all the construction industry, construction businesses that we work with. Nice. Well, something we love to ask our guests is, how did you get into uh, your current position? How did you find Breakthrough Academy? Did you know being a business coach for you know construction businesses is something you always wanted to do, or or what's your backstory? No, I kind of I kind of just fell into it. Uh, a I, common uh, answer, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that, just, that might be it, the yeah, most it was... it, most common. Like, has anyone ever not given us that answer, Charlie? I don't think so. I mean, ask Zach and I how we become podcast hosts. Good well, point. I, I, actually, I'm curious. <laughs> uh, I, I heard about this tiny little coaching company, and I was working in, in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, actually. In the constru- I was doing a whole bunch of things in the construction industry, and, and I heard about this little coaching company six years ago. And, and I got on the uh, phone with their CEO, and I was like, I love what you guys are doing. And I booked a plane ticket, flew up to Vancouver, and I sat with Igor, who's our CEO, for three hours and basically talked myself into the company. <laughs> That was back when we were coaching like 20 businesses, not 500, but have you guys grown that much in 
just three years. Yeah, we have around we have around five hundred. Wow. Wow. I guess yeah. I didn't realize that you had that few. You know, is that about when they started? It was three four years ago, or was that kind of like the norm for a while, where you only had maybe just a handful of companies you were really tight with for a while? Uh, yeah. So we started. I guess it was about six years ago, and I came on maybe six months or eight months after they started. Got yeah. It. This is just a few little companies just kind of all based in the Vancouver area. And then it grew from there. That's, that's super interesting. I mean, that's not honestly that different than builder trend story. I mean, we right. basically started as a, you know, we built a website for a contractor and locally. And he's like, can you guys make a schedule? And the founders were like, yeah, let's, let's try. And then <laughs> that turned into the software it is today. And that's all I love that. I had no idea. I, um, feel like I should have known that, but, um, <laughs> it's, it's super cool. We, we, I was just on a round table the other day with, with your company, with some of your clients and our clients and the engagement with the audience was incredible. Both people who use breakthrough Academy and builder training, but there were also non people like people that were kind of like looking into both. And it was a great opportunity for us to all work together. What, what is it exactly that Breakthrough Academy really does for, for maybe someone who is a builder trend user? That's primarily who's listening to this. Shout out though, like my mom and Charlie's mom who listens. <laughs> yeah, um, my mom's taking pictures of me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the gram. For the gram. What is it exactly that you you guys bring to a maybe a builder who doesn't you know know what Breakthrough Academy is really there for? Yeah, well, um, generally, I, I think like businesses fall into like basically two main categories that we see like well, there's category one where there's like low net profit and there's like some chaos happening in the company and they come and they're like i have no idea how to get myself out of this can you guys show me or they think wow this is going to take me like 10 years to figure this out myself can you guys show me how to get there quicker so we we're, we're, we're really good at helping those people but then there's also the businesses that are already pretty good like they have like strong systems in place they're making good money they're like they, they have strong networks, strong visibility in the marketplace. And we also work on helping those organizations like really polish everything that they do and, and kind of the core um, areas that um, uh, businesses need to be strong in, in order to see success. So um, yeah, I mean, that, that, that kind of, that, that's kind of what we focus on is just helping people like break through to the next level. And, and, uh, and then if people want more information, usually I explain the basic like five levels of, of success or that kind of arc to growth that you tend to see in trades based companies. And then I kind of say like, well, which level are you? And they explain it to me and then I'll say, okay, well, we can get you in the next level. And <laughs> here's how we just kind of draw out the roadmap. Um, and do you want me to like, I'm going to kind of regurgitate what those five levels are. Yeah. I mean, as much as you, you think, um, you want to share, we're all ears. I'd love to hear more. Like what would you do for a company? Who's like, I, I think I'm pretty successful. I'm at three, $4 million revenue. Like, well, you know, what would be your advice to them um, that, for process improvement? Well, like, yeah, I would, I would say, yeah, I want them to paint the picture for me on where they, what their kind of ideal utopian future looks like. Like, you know, are they, and, and sometimes guys are happy. They're like, you know, we do three, 400 grand a year net. I've got some great staff in place. I'm good. It's like, cool. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say, but if they're like, yeah, well, I've always, I would love to have a leadership team in place and, and I would love to be growing wealth for that leadership team and my family and this the company in general in other ways. And I'd love to just be doing other things probably five years from now. I'd say, okay, well, you know, if you were to come work with us, this is generally what the roadmap looks like and how we get you there. And then we leave it up to the individual to decide whether or not that sounds palatable to them. And, and they sign on and, we go from there. Yeah. So what I'm curious about is like, are most of the people that you're working with, like what's the first, what are like some warning signs that they need extra help? Cause I think a lot of the people that, you know, Zach and I would talk to that use builder trend is they've been doing something one way for a really, really long time and they've made it this far. And so convincing them that there's something better, like you can use a software to automate that you can use a software to track that same sort of thing. You can sign up for free, you know, business coaching with breakthrough, not free. You can sign up for business coaching with breakthrough Academy and, you know, take your business to the next level. What are some warning signs that I don't know, would indicate to you or to a business or to an owner of a construction company that they need some additional coaching? For sure. Um, well, the, the obvious ones are um, like uh, a, com a company owner is like working 
12, 14 hours a day. And they're like, there's just like a lot of chaos and a lot of fires that are coming up that, and they're just like, I don't, my business is controlling me. I'm not controlling it. So that's a warning sign. Another warning sign is they're just not making as much money as they thought. Like their net profit will be, you know, anywhere from zero to 5%. Like generally we're like, okay, we can, we can usually do something quite quickly to, to, um, to help you in those areas. Um, for the businesses that are already doing pretty good, uh, usually, usually those people, they just want to learn and, and it's quite easy to gap them to say, okay, well, you're good in lots of areas, but here's how we can get you better. So it's like taking a high school athlete and getting them to the state championships. And then you have people that are at the state championships and you're like, okay, well, let's build a plan to get you to the nationals. Right. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I think that's something that we've, you know, seen time and time again on this, this podcast is people that are don't want to settle right or they want something more they understand that things can be easier they can make life more enjoyable for their employees or build better for their customers um or just make work more enjoyable for themselves so i think that analogy of there's always another step that you can take to break through right i love yeah that. i love the naming convention there uh is something that you should take so if you're thinking about kind of what sets to your analogy the the high school state champ to the college athlete or what are some things that you've seen that you know sets businesses apart where you may be like all right you are you know level four you are you know ready to go to the next one um what kind of separates good from great well the best the absolute best companies um they'll they'll pursue excellence like they have a growth mindset they'll pursue excellence in in five core areas and that's in like human resources how they attract recruit onboard train staff um they'll pursue excellence in in financial controls um leadership um project management and which is my favorite and then uh, marketing and sales so like the, the thing that separates the um, great companies from the like adequate ones are, you know, just that they just, they pursue excellence in those five areas. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And one thing I've experienced with my, working with my clients, um, in my consulting time is they just don't know what that looks like. You know, like it, a lot of them fall into construction. They are family business. They, they may not have a network. They may honestly, they feel isolated a lot, you know, like they don't have someone that they can talk to and lean on. So, you know, one, one thing I always like to kind of explore with people like you, Paul is, you know, what, what is the secret to success? If you had to identify those five core principles, what would be the one that has maybe the, the quickest impact or areas that maybe a builder, if I started working on this earnestly, it would lead to even more growth than what I'm seeing, you know, for, for a listener out there, it maybe feels like, you know, I feel like I'm doing the right things, but I want to stand out. What is the prioritization I should take? And I know it'll be a little different for anybody, but you know, you, you said, for example, like PM is your favorite, like why? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, quick answer, project management, that's usually for construction companies, mm -hmm. at least that's the one where you see accelerated gains quite quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, 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 uh, good PM systems will just really increase the likelihood that like staff are empowered, customers are satisfied, change order adjusted budgets and schedules are being met. Um, uh, and what, what, what'll, what'll happen there. And it, it's usually, you can, you can put systems into a company quite quickly to set up those bumpers to increase the likelihood that project projects are being managed effectively. And then when that happens, you see an increase, like right away, you see alignment with staff, um, uh, more satisfied customers, higher referrals, which makes marketing and sales easier. You see better financial controls uh, and, and you see like stronger overhead efficiency, which is what allows like the, the good construction companies to just be absolutely great, like to hit the like 15 to 20% net profit like not as much like project management systems are very black and white. It's like put the system in. If you're doing it, you're doing well. If you're not doing it, then you, you need to get there. Why aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's something I'm sure, you know, Zach can relate to or anybody at our, our in our customer success department that's worked with our clients before is we, you know, we're, we're trying to give them this software that can, that can do this stuff for them. You know, if there's an easier way, um, and, and sometimes it could seem like leading a horse to water, but for those companies that want to take the next step, um, it's really, like you mentioned, pretty black or white, either you're, you're doing it or you're not. Yeah, totally. And, and yeah, software is, is a 
is a great way to to really uh, uh, ensure that project management processes are being followed and executed well. Yeah, and I think it's a little bit underrated the value that having a system kind of out of the box with those tools um, can be. I mean, it, I, I was just talking to some people yesterday, like the tool has it, it's the people using it that leverage the effectiveness of it. And so they have, you know, you have to learn what the tool can do and then you have to actually stay on top of it. And I want to get your perspective on like the art of project management as a whole. I mean, it's kind of a loaded term in the industry. Um, like what is project yeah. management? You kind of, you kind of laid out your principles. Um, what do you see from project managers, like a good project manager, uh, can, it, you know, what is, what are the qualities that you're looking for? Well, you need someone who, who is like, okay, sitting down and, and working with software. Like that's, that's, a that's like, I've seen great carpenters out there, great leads, great foremen, great site supers, but generally they, they, that you can tell they don't like it's not that they don't have the aptitude but they don't like sitting in front of a laptop project management probably isn't something that um they should really be pursuing but so you definitely need somebody that is like okay with technology that's a that's a really big one someone that is okay doing a lot of admin work because great project managers are typically not in their trucks driving around from site to site they're in the office managing the project in front of a computer um in construction specifically, project managers should not be perfectionists. I could usually get a lot of pushback from people when I say that, but um, um, yeah, and, and 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 but yeah, like the best project managers I've seen, they are just amazing at uh, allocating resources and energy and time uh, very efficiently according to what the project needs, so they don't just get caught in the weeds on like these small little things when they have a huge fire blazing. They're just like they're just good at just managing things within the context of resources and time. So, um, and then uh, another thing that project managers must have is they have to have the um, ability to come across to other people as like competent and capable. So a project manager loses their cool, the whole project can very easily go off track. Um, and then project managers generally have to be like be nice, calm people. Like, you know, I'm low, out. Like I would make not it. Big I was, ego. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zach beat me to the joke. That was instantly what I was going to say. Like I, just I didn't want to our guest. If I had any prospects in anything. this industry, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, so generally, yeah, they just calm, laid back, don't mind doing lots of admin, and they have to have a growth mindset. Like always, be pers like thinking about like better ways to do things. Yeah. Super interesting yeah, that, to say they can't be perfectionists. Sorry, Charlie. Um, attention to detail though, I'd imagine though, is like those, there aren't necessarily the same thing. It's okay to like, not that have it be perfect, but you can't miss little details. Right. Well, see, perfection is a loaded term. Like some guys, like you have to have some sort of any respectable construction company has a QC program. The project manager manages the job within the, um, uh, within the boundaries of whatever that QC program, uh, uh, it, it, whatever that, whatever is stated in that QC program. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and that's it. So like, I, I don't know how else to say it. Like if, if a project manager is doing that thing, then the job is, is, is doing well. Yeah. Um, where pro where perfectionists get like perfectionist project managers get bogged down is, is, um, like the, just like some, like, uh, what's a good one? Um, like they'll spend too long filling out administrative tracking systems. Like they'll sit like for a product status report for a customer, like a good project manager can fill one out in like 20, 30 minutes. But I've seen some of them are like, this is taking me four hours. Why? <laughs> They're just, it, it, it's like, come on, let's get going here. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, I think that differentiating the two kind of, differences between perfectionist and, and detail oriented is, is really important. Um, it's almost, you know, like picking your battles, right? Where do you need to be perfectionist at and where can you understand that good enough is enough to get you to hit your goals and, and be above where you want to be. Um, there's differences in, in places where you need to focus. I'm, I'm curious, you will obviously work with a ton of clients. You said breakthrough as a whole has over 500. Are there any kind of specific, you know, customer stories that come to your mind of someone that you worked with that was really, really struggling and you kind of helped them take them to the next level and get them back on track and any kind of specific success stories you'd want to share? 
Yeah, we have lots of examples of, of people that come in and they're doing zero to 4% net profit and, and, and we inject project management principles into their organization and, and, you know, quite quickly see their overhead efficiency increase and that affects their marketing and sales. And they're able to hammer through like 20% more revenue with the same amount of overhead. And as a result, their net profit goes from four or 5% up to 10%. Like that happens quite frequently. Um, uh, I, I do have one, I, I, yeah, I'll give you a specific example though. There's one guy, uh, there's one guy I met about two years ago, and he's one of those companies that was already doing okay, though. Like, they're already pretty good. They're about 9% net on 8 to 10 million revenue, somewhere in there. And then he kind of said, okay, like, I, I really want to get myself, like, give myself freedom in this organization. I really want to empower the right people in this organization, and I, I just want to crush it. And so, like, within a year and a half, uh, we got that company up to, um, 14 million at uh, 18% net, which is almost five times the national average. Um, Decent. Yeah, it was really Not good. Bad. And then another thing too that, yeah, another thing that he did too is, uh, like he said, if you ask him uh, what CRM are you using and how well are you using it, he'll say Builder Trend. And then, and then he says, and if I'm not using a hundred percent of the entire CRM, I'm using 99.99% of it. So that was what, that was one of the things we did is we made sure he was managing projects within the context of what your system, um, was, was kind of enforcing. <laughs> so, uh, that really helped. And he has like crazy overhead efficiency. Like he spends like 80,000 a month to run a $14 million company. Like it's nuts. Sheesh. Well, yeah. maybe uh, when we get done recording here, we'll, uh, you're going to have to give him the name. Give us the name, and we'll reach out and get him on the podcast. It sounds like an awesome success story. Uh, he's, a fan, he's a fantastic guy. He's a, very, he's a superior individual. Great speaker, too. Um, yeah, uh, so, yes. Yeah, I mean, specific things that we did, though, like, yeah, um, obviously, got him on Builder Trend. The other CRM just wasn't really working out. Uh, like I said, I'm a Builder Trend fan. Uh, um, so we set up a communication plan with his company to control communication in, like, all meetings. So every meeting had, like, a rhythm, rhythm and a cadence to it. This was production meetings, um, like, on-site meetings, individual meetings with project managers, individual meetings with site superintendents project status update meetings with clients like everything had a, a very clear agenda and there's in every meeting all those meetings that i mentioned they happened at like a, a very regular time and so it wasn't happening just when the customer got upset and needed to meet everybody on site it was like on this day at this time we're having this meeting right or if an inspection was happening it was like planned well in advance so, um we set expectations up with these customers early, early in the life cycle of the project. So, and that's very empowering because if you um, set expectations of the customer on exactly what's going to take place in the project with respect to like things that are going to cause the budget and the schedule to change, or um, like what their emotional like uh, I guess uh, roller coaster ride is going to look like through the, from the start of the project to the end, um, it's it's much easier to, when when issues come up later in the job to be like. You know, we talked about this. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, you said this would happen, and now it's happening. Thank you. So um, uh, another thing that I love is we set up a results-based bonus system with his leadership team. So his people, because their company is doing so well, his people are already being paid kind of at the top of, of, of their industry. But uh, Or sorry, uh, what other people would be paid in our city. But um, another thing that we did is we gave bonuses based on achieving very tangible results in the company. And so that just really motivated individuals to kind of take things to the next level and 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 work on just continuous improvement. Um, we instilled a points based bonus system with all field staff. So like all those like very tangible things that tend to annoy production managers, like people being late, people like not showing up to work and not calling on quality issues, not cleaning up the site at the end of the day, things like that. So we assigned points to those people and and we we calculate what those points are, and they would get bonuses based on those points, and it really gamified people's roles. And we found with like, especially the younger like staff that are like under the age of forty, they really like that. Um, and then yeah, like I said, there's there's the other areas like marketing and sales and HR and financial controls, and we just really like um, polished out like all the things that they're doing in those areas. And when you add up all those like little things that resulted in the high net profit, high revenue, high overhead efficiency organization. That's incredible. Uh, it's amazing how, you know, you, everybody's always looking for the answer, you know, but it, it, there's 
there's a lot of little tweaks, setting regular meetings, holding employees accountable, using positive reinforcement instead of negative reinforcement, which is the typical, you know, employment standards can lead to insane results. So that's amazing stuff. We hear that kind of stuff all the time when it comes to builder trend, customers will be like, how can I get my employees to use it? How do I get the culture to change? How do I, and that's really what they're asking, right? It's like, how do we embrace these changes? And I've always said the biggest struggle for builders in their, their processes is change management. You know, like and a lot of times I'm sure mm-hmm. Paul, they come to you and they're successful. Right. And they're just like, and they know it. They're like, I've built a, gr- a great company. I treat my employees well. So it's like, there's this minutia, these nuances though, that really can be taught that you start to look at it. And I'm sure you hear this all the time, but companies are like, why didn't I do this before? <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. <laughs> it seems so straightforward, but running a business is hard. It's easy to, to overlook like how these little things can make just insane magnitudes of changes. I was just, I think it's like, everyone also always thinks that they're the only people that have ever dealt with this problem. And we struggle with this <laughs> yes. at Builder. Yes. We do the same thing at Builder Trend. It's like, oh, how do we solve this issue? How do we build this thing? And we're like, oh, this is, and then you like do a Google search and you find, you know, 20 medium articles, 10 blogs, and like 15 <laughs> podcasts talking about specifically that. So that's why, I, I mean, for our listeners out there that are listening to this, I mean, come to Builder Trend University, go to Breakthrough Academy, network with other builders. And I think a lot of the things that, you know, Paul is talking about are, are things that aren't specific to one company that he worked at. It's the entire network there. You know, they see these same sort of things a lot and they have solutions to them. There, there are ways to fix it. Yeah, there's there's patterns in, of success that you just copy. Like other people have figured this out. There's no point in beating your head against the wall for three years. Like go copy it. Like <laughs> this has already been solved before. Uh, this is maybe an odd question. Do you think it's um, like a, not an ego thing, but just like a pride thing? Like I've been doing it this way for so long and I'm just going to keep like, wh- what is the, what do you think has been the breakthrough moment for people to be like, I, I need help. Maybe they don't know where help is, or is it, is it just like, I think this is how it's supposed to be. Like, well, it's interesting to just kind of explore why more people who are probably experiencing very similar things, like don't, look for those those options you know that's a that's a great question um for the people who are willing to change it's not an issue because they're always trying to be better in every area and for some people they aren't willing to change i don't don't know how else to say it like some people they just they 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 don't want advice they don't care they just want to just go through life and, and they're happy other people they just that's just the way they're wired they can't not pursue excellence. So I would say for the, for the people that aren't willing to change, there isn't a whole lot that you can, you can, you can do, but for people that are willing to change and all and want to pursue excellence, there's just lots of, lots of um, ways that they can, uh, like I said, see accelerated gains quite rapidly. Well, yeah, it's just like you said earlier, right? They have to have the growth mindset and that's kind of the first step there. Yeah. Yeah. I have to be very curious and be willing to just, um, accept that they're um, not even going to be adequate at a certain task. They just have to accept that they're going to fail for a while and roll up their sleeves and get to work. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the reaction to your clients? Maybe, you know, you have someone come in and you're recommending some of the solutions that you just had. Is there any pushback? Do customers ever, or clients ever say like, eh, I don't think that's going to work? Back back in the early days of BTA, definitely, like you'd experience some pushback, but uh, you know, um, yeah, like we, we we've seen so much success. So it's just kind of just can you just do this this way? Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then yeah, we always need to polish things, but generally we just say like you know we're just like like I said, there's the five levels of, of growth that companies tend to go through, and if you find a company in level two and they want to get to a level four, you just say, well, here's the companies that are in level four and here are all the things that they're doing. If you do those things, you really increase the likelihood of also getting to level four. And then usually when you put it that way, people don't really argue. They go, oh yeah, you're right. Let's just copy what they're doing. It's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, right? For sure. Well, unfortunately, yeah. Paul, I think we're getting close to time here and this happened the same time that, you know, same 
thing happened when we had Benji on. We <laughs> yeah. could talk for hours. The B roll uh, is going to be could... an hour. It'll just be like, exactly. we'll just keep going off air. <laughs> yeah. Well, there were like five different things that you mentioned throughout it. Like, we kind of focused primarily on project management, but you mentioned like sales and marketing and, and communication and like managing client expectations. Like we're going to have to, this is the second time breakthrough has been on, right? So mm-hmm. we'll have yeah. to get those numbers up to four or five before we cover it all. Or people could just go out to breakthrough Academy and, and sign up, right? And then learn it all without <laughs> yeah. having to wait for but the you next Then you don't have to listen to Charlie and I. Yeah. You just get right yeah. to the good stuff. <laughs> That's yeah, a win-win. Win. He yeah. said, <laughs> yeah, if they just go straight to you, Paul, you don't need, you could just skip the whole podcast and not have to listen to Charlie and I, you know, banter with each other <laughs> it's fine. you guys call me anytime i love like i really like talking to you yeah that's that's that was charlie's way of uh, open invitation we're we're making an executive decision if you ever want to come back you're you always have a seat here same goes for anybody at breakthrough ha- happy to there's always lots to talk about sweet well appreciate it paul we just had paul atherton on here talking about a lot of great stuff always amazing content I love going dive. I love that we like we could have gone a lot of ways. I love that we focus oh on God. project management because it is such a core principle as he laid out. Um, interested always for your perspective, Charlie. The only thing I didn't like about that podcast episode was the fact that we had to stop because I mean we were diving. I mentioned it. I don't want to repeat myself, but there's just so many different areas that we could have gone down. And I wasn't just hyping them up on the end there. I would love to have Breakthrough Academy on more and let's do a marketing episode. Let's do a sales episode. Let's do a client communication episode. Like we could do a whole series. Um, I mean, they're fantastic, huge, uh, huge friends of Builder Trend, uh, and, and likewise. So anytime we get someone from there on always fun. Uh, if our listeners haven't checked out the first one, uh, with Benji Carlson, they should definitely look that one up. Uh, he has a fantastic mustache. Uh, it's something I'll always remember. Mustache on the yeah. Outro. And, and he talks about some it. great things. Yeah, yeah. it's not what about the content. Exactly? It's about it's about the style. Let's be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. Substance. That doesn't matter. It's all about flash. Well, did he uh, did he get into everything? I mean, in the intro, we we're talking about the round table you were just on. Uh, we didn't want to give away too Actually, much, but there was a lot was of overlap. Lot of same? Yeah, it was really fresh, which was good. And you know, the the, the webinar is live, so it's kind of like now when we're shooting this, it's it's like it's funny because when it airs, it had been a couple weeks ago. So if you do look for it, if we put it in the show notes, um, ch- check it out. A lot of great, got a lot of great questions, like things about like how much should I be paying my project manager, like what what does a project wow. manager really get into, and that's the kind of stuff that Breakthrough really dives deep on. And and there's not one way to to define these, these PMs or even any aspects of the business. It's really about what works for you, but there's a lot of strategies that are tried and true, which we got into. And and this is going to really be, (laughs) it always validates me when I talk to them because this is the stuff that we do teach at builder trend as well. Um, and it's, we're on the right track with the, the type of consulting that we, we give to our clients. So it's just great to have two industry leaders really on the same page, supporting each other. And it's pretty rare. And so it always just gives me warm and fuzzy feelings as, as, you know, cheesy as that sounds. It's pretty cool. Yeah. As much as I tease about it, uh, and you and your consulting friends and not being able to relate on the podcast, I, yeah, I, you hit the nail right on the head. It, as it, I it, always it, do, you as know. you always do, it validates a lot of assumptions of like, okay, that the things that we're struggling with and the things that we're trying to teach, uh, are things that exist in the, the industry and, and things that should be being taught that way. So yeah, fantastic guest, uh, and look forward to more and hear from them. And I'm sure we'll have link to breakthrough Academy in the show notes. We'll have link to, uh, Zach's little round table with that. I wasn't invited to in the show notes, <laughs> uh, so if there's ever a time, I'll say it one more time to check out the show notes. This would be the one. Can I start like bringing you just a, a, like I get invited, but then I'm like, oh, well, Charlie, yeah. Charlie, you're just like with me. Yeah. OK, we'll, absolutely. We'll make it happen. Really, the last most important thing I got to ask behind you of the four men on Mount Rushmore, like who's your who's your favorite? You know? Oh, honest Abe, for sure. I, uh, <laughs> Not a bad I lived pick. in. Yeah, I lived in D.C. for a summer, and I went through a real big uh, Abraham Lincoln phase uh, in my life. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. Oh, we can get a into Lincoln that later. phase. I mean, that's a whole podcast episode in and itself. Well, you're uh, so people that don't know Zach used to be a history teacher. Uh, <clears throat> Some say it never left me. <laughs> do you have any fun Abraham Lincoln facts for the for the fans before we sign off? Uh, go. This is a little morbid, but you should look up the fact that his body got stolen after he was laid to rest, and they eventually had to um, put him in a more permanent grave, which is now <laughs> in under several feet of concrete. So it's a wild I story. I think the fact of 
all the facts that pop up about Abraham Lincoln, the, the fact that that's the one that comes to the top of your mind says a ton about you, Zach. <laughs> and, I, and I think it's a perfect way to sign off for the building code. So You never know what you're going to get here on the building code. Uh, you never know. But regardless, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, join the building code crew on Facebook, and make sure to tune in to our next episode. I'm Charlie Bertwistle. I'm Zach Watovich. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for exclusive content brought to you by Builder Trend.